Hey, it's Tim with PT Progress, and early on with COVID, I lost my sense of smell and taste, and I'll be honest with you, it was depressing and scary because I just wasn't sure if I'd ever get it back. And you're probably dealing with the same thing, and maybe you've watched some of the other videos I have about smell therapy and the research behind all of that, but be sure to stick around at the end of today's video because I'm gonna share the two things I did as I recovered my sense of taste and smell, and I know you'll find these tips to be helpful as well. There's new data coming out that shows almost 11% of people with COVID experience partial or complete smell loss for more than six weeks. And one study at Virginia Commonwealth University School of Medicine found that 20% of people did not recover their sense of smell by that six month mark after having COVID-19. Now this definitely falls into the long COVID category, which is defined as having symptoms for more than 12 weeks after the infection. And maybe like you, my senses just disappeared overnight. But for me, it took about a month for my sense of smell and taste to fully recover, which I'm really grateful for because it can seem like a lifetime if you can't enjoy food or coffee. And it's really scary because you can't smell smoke or, or fumes, which can be dangerous if something catches on fire. So what can you do based on actual research and not just some random comments that you see on YouTube about sketchy treatments or just flat out scams? And I'll say that as a medical professional myself, I turn to research databases like the NIH National Library of Medicine. You can search the PubMed library here to find the latest research on medicine and treatments. I'll link to some of those latest research articles in the comments. And while you're down there, let me know how long you've been dealing with an altered sense of smell. I read all of your comments and I really appreciate you guys. Okay, the first treatment that's backed by research is something called smell training or olfactory training. Now, I have an entire video about using these four key scents to help recover your sense of smell. Those scents are rose, clove, eucalyptus, and lemon, but you can use all other familiar smells like coffee beans, peppermint, and other citruses as well. But just be sure that when you're practicing your smell training to avoid this one mistake. You see, a lot of people will take a, a big whiff of a smell thinking that they have a better chance of smelling something. So if I have an essential oil in here that's lemon, I may take a big whiff of that thinking that I'm going to start smelling uh, sooner. But actually, you need to take smaller sniffs because that will help to keep the odor near the top of your nasal cavity. Just a small sniff like this. Now, when you practice this, practice each scent for about 10 to 20 seconds at a time and then repeat two to three times a day every day, going through each of your scents sequentially. I found it helpful to keep the scents in the kitchen on the counter so that every time I walked by it, I would be reminded to practice this multiple times a day. The fact is that smell training, it continues to lead the treatments for recovering your sense of smell, even though it seems really simple. Other treatments like taking corticosteroids, well, it's not really widely accepted as a treatment for smell loss right now, and it could have negative side effects. So stick with smell training and these other strategies that I'll list here in the video. The second thing I did as I recovered my sense of smell was to track my food and to really simplify my diet. Now, I couldn't even smell or taste most of my food with the exception really of just salty foods, but eating a really salty food like chips or just adding salt to your food isn't a great option uh, and it isn't really good for your overall health. So one strategy that I used while recovering my sense of smell and taste was to simplify my food intake. I kept my breakfast pretty plain with a small amount of oatmeal and even a, a piece of toast. And, and for lunch, I would have leftovers like some pasta or grilled chicken. And then I'd usually, usually have like a protein shake in the afternoon. Uh, and for dinner, we'd prepare just some normal meals, but I avoided things like soda or alcohol or anything other than water. And when you can't taste or smell anything, food is just really pretty bland and unappealing, but you do need to continue to eat nourishing foods and to avoid pointless junk foods that could really just have negative health effects besides simply adding empty calories to your diet. And with data pointing to an inflammatory response of the olfactory receptors as one of the key factors of smell loss, it could really make sense to try to limit foods that increase that inflammatory response. Now, this is one of the things that you can consider if you're trying to recover your sense of smell. And, and I'm not a food scientist or registered dietitian or your healthcare provider, but look, processed sugars, those continue to top the list of foods that cause an inflammatory response in the body. So limiting the amount of processed sugar in your diet, it might be a good idea, especially if you can't taste or smell anything, it's not gonna be that hard. 
Plus, it's absolutely gonna help you in more ways than one with your overall health. So for those of you who wanna try the olfactory training or smell training, check out this video right here. And if you found this video to be helpful or encouraging, let me know by giving it a like below. Hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video on how to get your sense of smell back with olfactory training. I'll see you there.